In your opinion as a doctor who works in this field, what is the best method of delivery for the majority of your patients? So just like with regular medications, we have different forms and modalities of administration. So we have albuterol, which is an inhaler, which is quick acting. We have steroids, which are pills, which are long acting. We also have steroid inhalers, which are short acting. So it's the same idea with cannabis. So in terms of inhaled, if you're gonna use a flower to inhale and preferably vape the flower, which is non-oil based, that's for a quick method of delivery. So if you have acute pain for cancer and chemo patients, you wanna address nausea and vomiting quickly, and that will address quickly. In terms of oils and sublingual tinctures, that takes about 45 minutes to an hour to start being effective and lasts about four hours. In edibles, it can take up to two hours to take effect. So oftentimes people feel like it didn't work and so they take more. And that's where we get into accidental overdoses that are non-lethal. People took a bite of a brownie or a bite of chocolate, didn't work, so I'm gonna take more. That's the most common issue that we see. And that lasts anywhere from six hours to up to 48 hours, depending on how big a dose you took. So it's really what do you wanna get across, or what do you wanna treat? I think that's really important information because when you do walk into a legal dispensary, as of now, even in the legal states, I believe the bud tenders in those dispensaries aren't required to have a medical background or any sort of pharmaceutical background. So, so it's really kind of roulette in that respect too as to what kind of advice you're going to get. That's absolutely right. So we need to start pushing both California and every state as they legalize, we need to start encouraging and demanding that they require bed tender required education because those are our current interface right now with patients and consumers. And they are not required to have a high school education. They're not required to have a college education. They're not required to have any education right now. Um, so yes, I would encourage every single person here to write to their Bureau of Cannabis Control and tell them that you know we do need these types of bed tender level education. We do need this education in pharmacy schools. We do need this education in medical schools. And to close this out, because we are out of time, I think there's a tendency in this country, the minute we legalize something, we assume that all methods of delivery are safe. Look, alcohol is legal in this country, but alcohol could be incredibly unsafe. Um, cannabis, we now know, has so many potential benefits when used in the right population as a medicine, but it also can be either abused or, as, as we've seen with this, THC vaping crisis, it can, if taken inappropriately from the wrong source, it can kill you. And I think these are all topics to consider. I really appreciate the work that all three of you are doing to educate, because it's all about education. So if you're gonna use, know why you're using it, know the me best method of delivery, and ask questions to the right people. And if you're not certain, this is where I actually applaud you, Dr. Yafai, there are doctors out there now who specialize in how to use cannabis appropriately and safely Inquire, go talk to someone like a Dr. Yufai who can give you unbiased advice so that you can do it safely and appropriately for your condition.